It's Smitty Houdini here on my boy SB Two Times doing this interview. About to get right. Don't mind me, don't bother. Don't mind me. I got my lean from a doctor. All right, so to jump right into it, where did you grow up? Basically, in Sonia. I moved from Bridgeport to Sonia at like five. Been damn near everywhere. Landed there. And stayed there. Moved around a little bit, but ended up back. What was your childhood like? Did you have both parents in the household? Were you a troublemaker as a kid? or? Uh, it was just me, my mom. And I had my sister around a little bit. She was around a lot. She left when she had a kid. But she always made sure I was good. Uh, I was always a good kid. I always got into shit, but I was a good kid. I found my way to trouble. Trouble found me, maybe. <laughs> Where did you get the name Smithy Houdini from? That shit, actually, that shit got uh, my boy Fred from back in high school. We used to ball together, and um, we just had fake names. And that my shit was like Smithy York, York something. So I started rapping. I mean, I've always been rapping. I've been rapping forever, writing forever. And, um, so I just like, I didn't know what to call myself. I had a couple bullshit rap names, like I had like 420. I had <laughs> even a couple of dumbass, uh, you know. But I landed with Smithy. It just it had nothing to do with me, but it was just comfortable. I was comfortable with it. And then Houdini, that shit, that shit was like my Super Saiyan development shit. I kind of turned into that. I added that because over time, Houdini, I like the concept of what Houdini is, and you could like relate that to whether you in a trap making shit, you know, making packs disappear, making shit happen, getting yourself out of tight situations. However, you want to relate that shit. Making things disappear. Um, that's probably associated with the street life. Now, were you involved with that at a young age as well, or is that just? I feel like. I was always trying to focus on sports. I was trying to play basketball to keep me away from all the, uh, you know, dumb shit. And, um, but I was, like, somehow always around shit, no matter how far I tried to stay away from this shit. And I just, like, got involved. And I would even like to say, like, street life shit. Like, I just feel like environment, tool shit, like, what you... I don't know. I ain't gonna complicate it. <laughs> but, uh, mm, I found my way through whatever. I landed where I landed and finessed my way through, basically. I noticed a lot of your videos and um, songs feature Bez Luciano. How did you link up with him? Luci, that's, um, just through the music. Through the music. We, uh, just how, cause he from New Haven. I'm like Aunt Sonia. We about 15 minutes away. Just somehow connected over the internet, linked up in person, and the first day we met was just like you know, the chemistry was there. You would have think we was friends for like ever. And uh, so we just started chilling all the time, making music, getting right together, you know. And then yeah, that's. So then brothers now, you know, free Lucci. Miss you, see you soon, bro. When did you start rapping? Uh, I, was, I was writing since uh like six, seven, because I was actually in a shelter with my mom and some lady gave me a CD with many men on it and I was listening to that shit all night and um, so ever since then, like I was trying to be like 50, I was writing, but I never had no flow at all. You know, I was always just trying to write. I had the words, I had the, you know, the real shit. And as a kid, you know, writing all the exaggerated shit, but, but I probably like, I started taking it serious or I wanted to take it serious, like 15, trying to get my craft right. And um, yeah, that shit just always been a passion of mine. Who would you say your biggest like influence to rap was 50 definitely 50 even if our styles ain't like that similar i feel like just with 
everything, how I looked at him, and how he just came in the game, just like, gonna oh, fuck everybody, like, I'm gonna do me no matter what. I, like, I was like, yeah, that gotta be the type of time I gotta be on, fuck it. Do you have any upcoming projects you wanna speak about? Uh, I'm definitely gonna drop WWKI too. If you uh, know any anything of my music, I released that tape like four or five years ago. And that should mean a lot to me because, and that stands for Waviest White Kid in America, because that's a fact. And that shit just, that tape, as soon as I think about that tape, I could think about what I was doing at the time. That should be an important part of my life. All right, so earlier we were talking about a situation that happened in West. You want to speak about that a little bit? Uh, it was a funny situation and uh, a funny, funny situation. I, uh, I tried to go in to do some basically some dumb hot shit. I didn't really think this shit too much though. You know, it was at a hungrier time in life. And uh, basically, I do some shit. I get right, hop back in my shit. And I'm basically trying to get low, doing some GTA shit. I end up hitting a couple dead ends. And the dude was from the area. So he threw some shit through my window. Didn't break the window. Get out the dead end. I hit another dead end. It's like 3 a, three p.m. Traffic. We had lights. You know, was, I'm trying to get low. Long story short, I hit the second dead end. He threw some big shit through my window. <laughs> Smashed the whole shit. I'm trying to, uh, so at this point, I'm like, fuck. I, I'm, I still try to get low. I'm, I'm doing GTA shit. Like, I got five stars. I'm trying to get low, bro. I'm, I swear to God. I commend this dude because he was on my ass. I ain't really, basically I'm riding with, I got a broken windshield now. I got a substantial amount of whatever on me with another item on me that I'm not supposed to have. So it's like, if I get pulled at this point, I'm flying, doing, I don't even try to running lights, this and that. I get pulled with the, all that, I'm done for. I'm like, fuck it, I gotta play this one smart. I, I tossed the shit out the window, play that shit smooth. After like, after 30 minutes, bro, I was trying to get, cause I, it was so much shit, like I, like, I gotta try, like, you know what I mean? And I'm not about to do nothing crazy at 3 p.m. front, you know what I mean? Like, it was just some hot head quick, I wasn't thinking. But, tossed the bitch out the window. I had to, uh, and then, you know, I just slowly slid my uh, way back my way. And then I thought about a hundred better plans. I could have did some easy shit. But I was, you know, stupid shit. You know, stupid shit happens when you do stupid shit. <laughs> you said you were doing, like, GTA shit. Were you getting chased by the police, or was it just one guy? Uh, it was uh, not no police. Uh, someone, a, a person. And, uh... But there was a time a cop wasn't behind was behind me because we was at lights. I seen the uh cop behind my rear view. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm a rat. You know what I'm saying? And this is, I mean, I'm not gonna really explain exactly what's up. But after after that, I was like, yeah, I should probably just get out of this fucking high speed chase and <laughs> probably just take this L. You know, regroup, get my shit back together, and hit the drawing board. You know, you win some, you lose some. He lived to fight another day. Out of that whole situation, did you get what you wanted, or did you oh, throw nah, everything nah, out? Oh, nah, you know, you nah, no, I ain't get a damn thing. So this the whole shit was thing a waste just, just of time. Ended up with a busted windshield. Busted windshield. With, with you know, no I'll talk about the it. losses, but I can't talk about the wins. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely got more wins than losses. If someone has never heard of your music before, never met you, and is willing to listen to one song, what one song would you tell them? To play. I was thinking about that shit, and uh, probably higher not higher knowledge. That's a song with me and my bro Jeweler, Free Jeweler. I'll see you soon too, bro. Um, it's like when I was I was younger, and I was you know I was rapping, rapping, and uh, we both just went crazy. And it was at a time in life where music was everything to me. 
it still is everything to me, but you know, you, you get sidetracked with shit, you know, life shit, growing shit. But if you listen to that song, Higher Knowledge on my SoundCloud, that shit got about like 7K views. And that shit, that shit is solid. That shit is so pure. This is a beautiful song. All right, well, uh, this concludes the Smithy Houdini interview. Hey, shout out my boy Espy, man. I appreciate you having me. It's doing legendary, bro. Doing shit for CT that we need him to do. For real, man. Appreciate you.